So, I've done several of these Z-Links, so I couldn't see any point in shooting a full video on it, but I thought I'd give you a few highlights. So this, while it looks identical to the other ones I've done, is actually off from a Caterpillar um, 950. All of the other ones that I've done, I think I've shot a couple videos of it, are Cat 980, um, G's and K's. This is a 350. I can't remember which series, but at any rate, so what that means is, while it's got the same problems they have, which this one, that hole's good, that hole's good, but it was blown out on the, uh, that's where the dog bone goes in over to the bucket. That hole was shot, so I've got it all welded up. Now this has a couple of interesting things going on. You may recall that on the uh, 980s, I have got this uh, peg machined up right here that bolts to that angle plate, and the way this is designed is it's a slip fit inside the bushing, and then I'm using the back side of the bushing to square up off from, and the reason for that is that these faces get all worn out of square, and I don't trust them to hold this thing truly square, whereas the bushing, it never, even if the bushing is worn on the bore, the face is never worn because nothing touches it, so the fact that it's shoved in and the fact that it is the thing that I want it to be square to, this uh, angle plate is keyed to my table, so it's perfectly 90 degrees so as long as I get square to it with that I know I'm square over here so anyhow this was interesting in that first off that peg didn't fit it because it's a half inch smaller than the 980s but it had something else interesting see this paint line around here the wear surface that this makes contact with is a little bit smaller so what that means on both sides I had this witness band around it of unworn face so I got my scraper out, scraped the paint off from it, and I'm just going to literally clamp it up against this to get it square. So that's what I'm up to. I probably won't show a whole lot of this one just because I've shown a couple of these, but I mostly want to show it. Oh, and the other thing, you may recall on the uh, 980s, I've always had the peg clear up here, and that's because the center distance between there and there is enough longer that if I have it laying like this one, I can't reach the hole on that end. It's too far out off the end of the table. Whereas this one's enough shorter, that's why I'm just sitting on a block of wood here right now, is I'm getting ready to just clamp it up against this angle plate, and wherever it ends up is good enough. So, because it, uh, I did some measuring, and I've got plenty of travel to get over to that bore. So, that's what we're going to set up and do now.
roughing pass, running pretty good. This is where a small boring mill is nice, because three inch spindle, I'm, my finished hole is three and a quarter inches, so three inch spindle is perfect. It's the biggest you can have and do this size pinholes, which is pretty common for me, so. Someday I wouldn't mind having a bigger boring mill also, but in this instance, this machine couldn't be more perfect. Let's go get my uh, depth setting tool and we'll get this thing bumped out some more and take a whack. I've got about 80 thou to go, so 40 on a side. I need to uh, take another 30 on a side to see if this looks like it's going to clean up or not. All right, well, looks like I'm probably going to have some touch up welding to do, but the overall picture is looking pretty good. Got the first round of welding up done, and we're just, uh, I haven't changed the setting on the cutter at all. I'm just buzzing back through there, seeing what that does once. See a few sparks. It's all that uh, bits of spatter that stick themselves in there. They chill really fast and get hard first pass through after a uh, touch-up job like this is always really hard on the cutter. It'll be pretty well wipe, wiped out after this pass. Taking 10 on a side now, which is still a fair amount short of our finish dimension, just to uh, kind of clean up around my weld spots and just see how we're looking here once. Right. See what we got. Yeah, this is what I was seeing. That right there, that's not going to clean up. I got a few little speckles here. Those probably will. And we got a few spots over here that are still showing up. I should have just put a whole nother pass of weld in it when I was welding it the first time, but I knew it was going to be close, and a whole nother pass would have been a lot of carbon to get out of there. All right, well, I'll check it out, see what we need to touch up yet. Hopefully this is our last touch-up round. I uh, just had a couple more spots in there. Sharpened my bit and we're taking a carve through there. We'll see how this looks. It's looking real good, guys. There's a few little pock marks in there, but nothing we're going to go back after. So, taking five thou on a side right now. I've probably got another pass about this deep to get to finish dimension. We'll see what we're actually at after this. Cause You've been, you know, welding and doing interrupted cut stuff. It's hard to get a good, accurate measurement. So that's why I'm taking a light cut. See what dimension I'm exactly at to decide what my finish pass needs to be. So. Anyway, she's looking real good in there, cleaning up nice.
see how my bar looks. Yeah, you can see like a little ripple dipple down there. Nothing that I care about for my purposes. There's another little one there. Functionally make no difference. So we're going to go ahead and get a measurement and take her to final dimension. All right, we're on finished pass here. Five thou on a side coming out of there. A little over 300 RPM on the uh, rotation. I don't remember what my... Uh, I think I was running eight thousandths per revolution on the feed rate. All right, so per my uh, caliper measurement, I am right on my dimension right now, but still a little snug. I don't... It needs to slide in easier than that, so I'm hitting really close to a size for size fit right now. So I'm going to bump this out one thousandths, uh, set my tool out a thousandths, and should give me a couple thousandths clearance on the pin and let her slip in there. So anyway, that's what we're up to, just touching her out a thou and hopefully being done. All right, guys, well, we're done with the machining phase of this. The pin slides through this side nicely. This side, it's a little bit snug on yet. Um, tool was starting to get a bit dull and, you know, so the... Uh, boring bar deflected a bit but I'm gonna go ahead and hit that with a hone it's in order to get it to do a nice job you can see the finish a little hit and miss on it and I'd have to pull the tool sharpen it put it back in and when you're trying to like just skim a half a thou out a little risky I'd rather just take the uh, sun and rigid hone to it it's more controllable and I'll get a nicer finish out of that when it's all said and done so anyway we're gonna bust this thing down and get it out of here and do some honing I got a touch I've got spatter and stuff on these faces I gotta just hit them with a uh, flap disc clean them up once but anyway we're about to be wrapped up with this well there she is I've got it um, where it's pretty snug. Um, it slides through this one easy, slides in, and, and gets tighter towards this edge of the hole. It makes sense because as I'm boring out, you get more bar deflection as you come out when you use the spindle to bore with like that. So it's a little tighter on this end, but I actually don't mind that at all because it means it'll slide in by hand and... It's basically as snug as you can have it and slide in easy. So anyway, this job is done. It's ready to go back to the customer, and we're on to the next one. I'm uh, actually working on this project now, which is one of those jobs that I shouldn't ever, ever get into. I used to do a lot of mechanicing years ago, and I pretty well got out of it. But once in a while, a friend of mine needs a hand, and I get into it. And this is one that I actually took on probably two years ago that was supposed to just be a little bit of a wiring project and in the long haul ended up being an engine swap and oh I forget what all but I wanted out of here so bad so anyways that's what I'm kinda of working on the backlog that little lathe I messed with a bit today that's another project for a friend with a broke compound so I am trying to get them kicked out of here because I want to bring in the uh, uh, Colchester 21 inch parts lathe that's outside and start working on this guy and get the uh, get that big Colchester 1400 ready to actually use but I need to make some more space so anyhow I'll catch you guys on the next video you have a good evening